Hi guys, it's Steph from My Driver Classic and in today's video I'm taking you around this amazing hot hatch, the 1988 Austin Metro ARX and with only 1,500 produced, it's a super rare car in today's world, in fact there's only two or three left. So in today's video I'm going to show you around the outside of the car, bring you on the inside, show you around the inside, talk to you a little bit as we go for a drive and together we're going to discover the British car to beat the world. How exciting, today we're having a look around an Austin Metro ARX. Now you notice there the badge says Metro. So towards the end of the 80s, they started just calling the Metro the Metro. They weren't necessarily using the Austin name. And a fun fact for you, if you're a bit of a fact geek like me, is that the Austin Metro was the last car to carry the Metro branding. And also it was the last car to carry the Morris branding, which is a bit weird, but some of the vans are badged um, Morris Morris Metro um, it's a bit weird it's one of those things that Leyland did where they messed about with all the names anyway this is quite a nice car to have a look around because it's a little bit different and as you'll notice it says ARX and as I talk about later in the video who knows what ARX stands for if you do I actually want to know because um, it's in none of the promotional material that we had a look at and um, it's pretty much a sporty upgrade on your normal metro so as I just showed you there you've got things like your reflectors on your mud flaps and as we look around this car you'll see that it's in really good condition for the age so it's a 1988 car um, and it really defines that um, that reputation that metros have of all being rotten and in fact um it's quite a rare one as well because I keep talking about there's only one or two, um, there's only one or two, two or three ARXs left. Now let's have a look at what's under the bonnet. So under the bonnet, it doesn't look too dissimilar from Jill, um, asbestos warning there, only mildly concerning. It's running an A plus 1275 and one of the most interesting things that um, Ryan told me when we were talking about this is unlike your earlier metros, this has a servo on it so it relies on the vacuum of the engine and essentially it means you're not having to stamp on the brakes but in my opinion I don't think especially for the age of the car and um what was going on I don't think it's actually these are too taxing to break on and as you noticed on the plate there that I showed you mine says British Leyland but these later ones say Austin Rover now let's have a look at the interior it's very in my opinion it's very 80s it's very sporty you've got your red trim you've got your grey trim it's a big step up from your earlier metros where everything was just kind of that vinyl headrests were optional whereas in this we start seeing headrests come with it you've got your seat belts in the back your dash is looking a lot more advanced there's a lot more plastic and it feels like there's a lot more gadgetry involved um, and it's very stylishly put together and you'll notice that that color coordination that BL had going on still carries through into this so even the red piping on the seats running through to the door cards and with this being a nice example the seats are still in great condition so we can really appreciate this for what it is so I'm going to flip it forward and show you um, You've got your door, door door box there's there so you can put all your things in, your ashtrays and again your parcel shelf is not an optional extra and you've got seat belts all the way through the back. So as I start talking about in the video, safety was starting to be thought about a lot more um, and in my opinion this is a lovely car and um, I can't wait to show you what it's like on the road because I really love it. So I wanted to show you guys the dash because um, one of the first things that really struck me as well as how quiet the engine was, was how modern it felt inside compared to Jill. Now, if you're driving one of these modern SUVs, I'm sure you're gonna say to me, it looks positively stone age to you. But for me, as somebody who drives a 1981 Metro, this feels like a massive step up when actually there's not too much in it because I believe that this facelift came about in around 84. So I thought I'd show you the dash so you could see how it looks. And as you've probably already guessed, it looks very colour coordinated. So in Jill, as you know, it's just that kind of tinny paprika dash, whereas in this, it just feels a little bit more sturdy. And we've also got a lot more going on. So I'm going to show you one of my favourite features, actually, as we turn this on. Is um, I like a bit of ambition. And you might be able to see here, so we'll zoom in and just show you. You've got a caravan light, and that's actually a towing light. So that works whether you are towing a caravan or towing a trailer. And I'm also going to show you one of my other favourite features. So 
I'm just going to show you the arms here. So as you would expect, as it is on Jill for me, you've got your lights on this side, you've got your horn. So I'll show you the horn. So sounds pretty normal. Um, but one of the things that really bugs me about Jill is I don't have any indication on my dash that my lights are on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I don't have any any indication on my dash that my lights are on. So I quite often leave my lights on and my neighbours are forever knocking and saying, oh, Jill's lights are on. So I'm going to show you um, this little nifty feature. Look, And for you at home, you might say, well, I've got that on my car. That's perfectly normal. But for a Metro, in my opinion, this was a great step up because it meant that they were starting to listen to people. So even when you put your side lights on, you've got your little light on the dash there and your dash lights up immediately and as well i like that almost futuristic 80s b and q boys bedroom vibe of that kind of that gridded dash that we saw a little bit of on the bluebird as well it's that gridded dash it's that almost monochromatic black gray a little touch of red it feels like they've really thought about how they've put this car together as well and i like i just like all of it to be honest i think it's really well laid out and so as well you've got your hazards here see so hazards are here you've got your demist over here <clears throat> And as well, there's a few nifty updates from when we were in the Metro. So when we, and when we were in the Mark 1 Mini Metro, and if you've not watched that, you should watch it because I talk a lot about what's in Jill. You've just got your little ashtray up here. Whereas in this, we've stepped up a little bit. So we've got an ashtray here, complete with driver's cigarettes. You've got your... Um, cigarette lighter over here you've got your choke down here personally i prefer having it over here where i have it and then also you've got your coin tray so it feels like they've really thought about stuff and as well one of the things that really bugs me on your base spec metros is that you don't have a clock and um, i mean look i've got used to it because i've driven a morris minor for years and it doesn't have a clock but this actually does so look at let me show you so during the day it's quite dull but now soon as we put i'm going to turn this on soon as we put the lights on it starts coming up so there you go you can see that there now for me it's a it's a big step up. I think it's a big step up. You've got everything from your padded headrest to your padded seats to a little bit more, in my opinion, a little bit more imagination and things like the door cards. The dash seems to have had a little bit more thought. There are upgrades to it. It feels like a good step up it feels like a step in the right direction it handles really well it drives really well it's quieter it's i guess the only thing that i don't like about it is that and although it's a step up and it is a step in the right direction for safety i don't like it so these headrests here are solid whereas i'm so used to jill's head headrests having a hole in the middle and driving a morris minor and having no headrests for me this feels like it's impacting my visibility but look it's a very small thing and it is a step in the right direction for safety and whilst these may have got a terrible safety rating in my opinion cars of this age none of them perform that well unless they're one of those massive volvos and i think it is a really nice car so now we've had a look around the outside um we've had a look on in the inside i've shown you under the bonnet i'm going to start the car up so you can hear how she sounds now it's time for one of my favourite bits of video, we're going to start the car up. Now this isn't my first time taking the ARX out, in fact that's a little bit of a confession because I've been friends with Ryan for a long time and when he bought the ARX he brought it up in January and so I took it out for a little drive in January. So uh, me starting the car up today, it's not my first time but I had to show you guys because one of the things that really surprised me the first time I started it up was that I'm very used to Jill. Jill sounds very loud, um, it sounds very different to this, although it's not too dissimilar on the mileage, Jill's on about 96, 98 now, whereas this is on 79,000. So really you would expect the engines not to sound too different but because of the sound deadening and because because everything in my opinion feels a lot more substantial in this car the engine noise isn't as prolific so I'm going to start the car up so you can have a listen so as you can hear it is actually quite quiet which is going to make chatting to you guys quite easy as we drive about so we started the car up the seat belts on I've just got it tucked under so we're going to head off 
Now, one of the exciting things to always talk about when I'm talking about older cars with you is to talk a little bit about the history and where this car fits in. So for those of you already in the know and for British Leyland fanatics out there, you'll know that the Metro launched in October 1980 and um, it was very popular. And in fact, an advertising executive came up with the phrase, the British car to beat the world. And in my opinion, it really was because they're fantastic. So I'm slightly biased, so today's video is probably going to come across, but I don't care because those of you that follow me, you'll know that I love the Metro. So anyway, back to our little timeline. All the way back in October 1980, the Humble Metro was released. It was a massive hit straight away. Uh, did really well, and in fact, it did so well, and it was so highly regarded that Princess Diana swapped out her, I believe she had a Renault 5, she swapped it out for a very humble W Reg Austin Mini Metro. So it's one of the first ones would have been a 1980. So she was papped in that quite a lot when she was courting Prince Charles. And uh, that now lives in the British Motor Museum if you want to go and see it. So anyway, the Metro was doing really well. And in fact, across its lifespan between 1980 and 1998, it won Car of the Year twice, once as the MG, once as the Rover. Um, and so it was doing quite well, so 1980, the launch, 1981, still doing very well. I believe by 1981, they'd sold 130,000. Um, so 1982, at the Birmingham Motor Show, saw the launch of the next phase, which was the Vanden Plaza. So for those of you that are very into your British uh, British Leyland history, you'll know all about the Vanden Plaza because they did it across things like the Allegro as well. And um, so 1982, they released the Vanderplan Metro and they also released the MG Metro, which was a very sporty car. Um, it was basically like the real hot hatch of hot hatches because they were, you know, Austin were looking, at Austin and Leyland were looking at the competitors. They were, you know, they were doing, um, they were doing different sporty models. They were doing different things. And they said, right, let's go out with the MG Metro. And again, that did really well. I think it was 1984 that um, it won car of the year with the MG Metro. And, um, anyway so we skip forward to 19, 1988 the year I was born and uh, they released the ARX which is what we're in today so we've looked at some of the advertising material that came with it because Ryan's got some of the bits and pieces um, and nowhere on the paperwork does it specify what the X stands for however as those of you that know a little bit about advertising from the 80s and 90s things like 2000 and X's and things were often popped on the end of words or phrases to make them sound a bit more sporty or futuristic so I'm assuming the AR stands for Austin Rover and the X must be extra or extreme or you know anyway it was designed for that younger audience who wanted something like the MG but couldn't afford it. They wanted something sporty, they wanted that hot hatch, but they couldn't necessarily afford it. So there were 1,500 made of these, and I believe that on the road today there are two or three left. And um, this is probably one of the nicest examples I've seen, and um, it's 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 really different car to drive so I'm very used to driving Jill who is a 1981 so there's not really any changes between you know from launch to 1981 whereas this feels absolutely streets ahead so it's very different and one of the first things that I found very different was it feels a lot less tinny it feels a lot more substantial and it feels like there's a lot more going on so as you'll have seen when we had to look at the dashboard there are a lot more controls I mean there's even a little caravan like for goodness sakes and if the dash looks familiar it's probably because when we took out the freight rover a few weeks ago the uh, the dash was exactly the same so I know that I referenced this car when I was talking about the, uh, the freight rover and uh, it's it's just a very different car to drive. Now, one of the big things that people always talk about is they talk about the suspension, getting the units regassed, etc., etc. So this hasn't been regassed, and um, it's actually running very well. It's uh, it's doing really well. It's handling it quite well. It's in fact, it's handling it better than Jill, which is really. A, you know kick up the backside for me that I need to get mine sorted out actually but yes it's uh, first impression is it's very substantial and I think it helps with the chunky steering wheel as well which I believe 
it looks to me to be the same as the Maestro steering wheel, but in the center, instead of saying Maestro, it says Metro, but it feels like a really substantial steering wheel for the size of this car. Whereas I know that when I took, in fact, it's the, it's the Montego, I'm sure it's the Montego that shared it with. So when I took the Montego out, I felt that the steering wheel was quite small for the car. Um, whereas in this, it feels like it's the right size. It feels very chunky. I feel, I don't know why, maybe it's just, maybe it's just subconscious. It feels like I've got a lot more control of the car. It feels like it's handling the road so well. And um, I tell you what, the more metros I take out, the more I drive them, I really don't understand that the criticism that you see leveled at them because they are astonishing cars to drive. And this one truly is no exception. Now I talked about the, um, the hydrogas units needing to be regassed. So I said that you know the ride isn't too bad, it's not too bad compared to Jill. But I have actually been out, so Ryan's got two metros, um, a true glutton for punishment if there ever was one. And um, he's actually had his other car regassed, his 1982, 1982 HLE, it's a very nice car, um, Cinnabar Red. So he's had that regassed and uh, it, it does handle, he always uses the term magic carpet, which I really hate. Uh, but it does handle like a magic carpet and this the ride on this is a little bit harsher but because i'm so used to jill and her ride being quite harsh because she needs to be regassed for me it doesn't feel too uncomfortable and in fact it's a very very comfortable ride i mean look people always say that oh the metro didn't stand up against other 80s cars it's not as good but you know for the price these were when they came out and what competitors were charging i actually think it's pretty comparable and i think that some of the earlier cars that weren't taken back for their rust protection really let the metro name down and i think there should have been more done to do you know combat how people were talking about it because it picked up the name metro and to be honest i think it's quite unjustified because this car especially has really stood the test of time it's time for a catch up with the owner but first i had to show you the characteristic metro gearbox wine Hello, my name's Ryan, I'm one of Steph's friends. Um, as Steph mentioned in the video earlier, um, I already own a Metro actually, um, a 1983 HLE, and this Metro came up for sale in the town where I live in Worthing. It had been owned by an old man, and um, it just had an A4 bit of paper in the windscreen saying, please buy me. Um, so having been given a tip off by somebody else, I went and had a look, and um, initially, thought no I really don't need another car I've already got a Morris Minor which has been off the road for nearly two years and I've got a Metro which needs doing work on it already I really could do without having another one um, anyway temptation got the better of me and uh, I ended up knocking on his door and making him an offer um, he didn't accept my offer but a couple of weeks later uh, lo and behold I got a phone call um, saying that uh, he'd be interested to negotiate with me more and so I went round and I ended up buying this ARX <laughs> So I bought the car last um, November or December, and mostly, actually, it's been pretty plain sailing. Um, I took the car without any preparation, which was a bit foolish of me, um, with a couple of friends up to Yorkshire last January, and whilst we left in blizzard conditions and got there okay, the next day on the Saturday, um, the car started playing up and uh, it cut out and wouldn't start again. Anyway, we diagnosed the problem as being a carburetor issue and when I got home, I rebuilt the uh, carburetor and um, touch wood, it's all been good since. And that is literally the only problem um, mechanical, you know, or mechanically speaking, I've actually had with the car since owning it. Um, the other thing that I have had to do to the car is change the radiator and what I find interesting is that, or well, interesting, a bit of a pain as well, is that um, the Mark II parts actually seem to be much harder to get hold of um, than Mark I bits, anything that is specific to a Mark II that is. So for instance the radiator that um, goes in the Mark II is different to a Mark I and the radiator that was in this car was just really past its sell-by date and uh, you know many of the fins were missing and it was completely scaled up. Um, so after a lot of searching without any luck, um, somebody um, in the club who I know very kindly um, said that they had one and they were willing to um, sell it to me as they had no immediate need for one so I fitted that and um, since that's been in really um, 
that's that's the last bit of work I've had. The only other thing I have had to do to the car is sort the exhaust out, which has been a bit of a ball ache to say the least, because um, the old exhaust I mended with a couple of Coke and beer cans, which did for a, a couple of months, but then of course you know that uh, you know that that bodge repair didn't last very long. So I bought a new exhaust section. The new exhaust section that came ended up um, proving to have a hole in it. Basically, it hadn't been welded up at the front. Um, join where the two pipes split. So I ended up taking the old exhaust off, putting this new one on, taking the new one off, putting another one back on, um, and eventually I have got there. So apart from the exhaust and that carburetor problem and changing the radiator over, all has been well. So I don't usually do it like this, but Ryan is actually one of my best friends. And um, I wanted to ask him two questions so he doesn't know what's coming um, because I love catching him off guard. He's hilarious. So one of the questions I wanted to ask was, Ryan, what do you think the difference is between this and uh, Timmy or HLE from 1982? Well, one of the most obvious things is speed. Um, mm. The HLE has rubbish acceleration, to be <laughs> honest. But um, that's not why you own an HLE. It has excellent fuel economy, and this fuel mm. economy is nowhere near as good. Um, the other main difference, mm. to be honest, is um, this is grey, grey, grey throughout, whereas my other car is brown and beige throughout the entire thing. So, Do you want um, to tell people what fuel economy you're getting? Because people always say about modern cars, they go, oh, my modern car gets 40 mm. to the gallon. Wait till you hear... Right, just tell people what you get. Well, um, a couple of years ago, when we took... Um, the metro down to Bordeaux in France on the um, on the motorways out there I was getting between 55 and 60 miles to the gallon cruising at um, about 62 miles per hour which is brilliant I've I've got um, 38 out of this but that's more sitting at 70 miles per hour so I guess it's yeah it's still it's still fine now one of the reasons that I've turned the camera on both of us is um, because my Metro obsession was reignited. People always ask me this, why did you buy a Metro? Well, Ryan came to visit me a few years ago and I'd been been on the fence about it because I wanted to change up the Mark II Golf and uh, Ryan bought Timmy the HLE up and um, even though we went up a hill and it was so slow we got overtaken by a cyclist Ryan really ignited my passion for Metro so one of my questions for Ryan, <laughs> one of my questions for Ryan is Ryan would you recommend a Metro to somebody else? Yeah definitely um, I think they're really fun to drive apart from yeah. anything else and despite their unfair reputation sometimes i think you know provided that you look after them they are very reliable cars um and i always think it's silly really that the metro is branded as unreliable and yet the mini wasn't yeah. because mechanically speaking they're pretty much identical certainly yeah. the a series ones anyway yeah. um and yeah they've just got a, a really go-kart feel about them which yeah i would defy anybody to to, to find boring anyway to drive and also, something else we haven't discussed is, is the price bracket. So if you go for a metro, a decent metro will only maybe set you back a couple of grand, or if you're in the right place at the right time, you might be able to get something for around the £1,000 mark. Whereas with a Mini, you're looking at thousands of pounds. Mm. And I think that, especially for young drivers, you can get insured quite cheaply on an early metro, because you can do it on classic insurance, and you get that same fun go-kart experience but without the mini price tag yeah absolutely yeah. and also i think that metro is, is is a much more interesting vehicle than the mini purely because they're much rarer yeah um and you know let's be honest you see minis all the time you don't see metros all the time well no and i think as well something that um we don't ever talk about is you have to have guts to drive a metro because <laughs> we were driving to manchester yesterday and uh, people were pointing and laughing at us on the motorway mm. so whether that was admiration or um amusement um i definitely think they're a brilliant car so i hope that if i haven't already persuaded you to buy a metro i hope that ryan's arx experience has perhaps uh, changed some of your opinions so now that we've done that um i'm gonna head and drive back so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna film i'm gonna get ryan to pop in the back seat and if you recognize ryan it's because uh, he also featured in the uh, in the snuggy video he had to push me out of that space because we didn't have reverse <laughs> <laughs> anyway um I'm going to get Ryan to film me driving from the back seat so you guys can see what it's like to be behind the wheel of the ARX because honestly, it's a brilliant car to drive. It's, in my opinion, it's really attractive to look at as well. And it's a really nice modern update from Jill without being too modern that it becomes boring. So let's flip the camera back around and watch me driving. So before I wrap up the video, I just wanted to show you what it looked like to be sat behind the wheel because it's quite a different experience for me. It feels quite modern, actually. Um, it feels more like... It feel, 
dash wise it feels more like when I took Collins Montego out um, opposed to Jill um, it feels like there was a lot of progress in a very short amount of time and for a lot of people it criticise BL and like to run it down I would love to show them this experience because people look back on things and sometimes they only remember the negative stuff but honestly they're, they're great cars they're good fun and I think people look at minis and they say oh well you know that's the be all and end all of the small car um, especially from a British point of view but I would urge you to go back and give the very humble Metro another try because they're good fun um, prices are still relatively cheap if you want a classic of this era especially for a hot hatch um, MG's are a little bit more um, Mark 1 seems to be going up in price quite a lot actually but you can still get a relatively good Metro for a relatively low price and if you're a young person that wants to get into the world of classic cars or you're someone who's a little bit older, wants a classic to have a lot of fun with um, but doesn't have a massive budget, I think the Metro might be the car for you and they're not as bad as people make out and you really shouldn't listen to the negative publicity it's like the marina really but that's a video for another day as soon as joe gets that marina on the road we'll be out in it anyway i really hope you've enjoyed this video it's been so much fun to make for you um and it's been so much fun to kind of turn the camera around as well have a bit of a chat with ryan because i feel like we started with morris miners and now we're here in the world of austin metros and it's not it's not a step up that um i ever thought we would take and i'm so glad we have because we have just as much fun in the metro and so, in fact sometimes more fun so yes anyway until next time take care and drive safely mm -hmm.